Hi, today I want to do a short demonstration of a new wind turbine technician electrical safety kit. You may say all in one package. So here on my back This is the new electrical safety kit that we've pulled together to enable wind turbine technicians onshore or offshore to have all their required electrical safety, PPE, tools and equipment together in one place to enable them to work safely on uh, any electrical equipment within a wind turbine. Before we start however, meaningful to say, my top half and trousers, both of them are inherent Arthrex protective garments. The t-shirt here is a super lightweight, 190 GSM lightweight art flash t-shirt which is 8.8 .8 calories per centimetre square. The trousers I'm wearing are 10.5 cal per centimetre square, again 235 GSM around uh, 7 ounce ripstop fabric, super lightweight, knee pop pockets, cargo pockets for example. So um, my base layer, I'm well protected. And remember, they are inherent, they are not treated, so they can be washed in a conventional washing machine, conventional laundry, with unlimited amount of washings. Endless. Millions of washes, and the garments will always retain their protective properties. Now let me show you the contents of my kit bag. The kit bag itself is a very, very comfortable item, very breathable. So we've got nice, generous strappings to the kit bag itself. They are available in a number of different colour combinations. A breathable back, really comfortable to wear, well fitted. There's a loop on the top to enable it to be attached to other items of luggage if you're transporting a number of different bags at the same time. And also can be used obviously for winching up to the nacelle within a turbine. So here I have everything that I need to keep myself safe from electric arc flash and electric shock. So, Typically speaking, a wind turbine engineer would already have his safety helmet on and a popular item is a Petzl helmet of sorts um, or a cask item, but whether it be the, uh, the Alveo or the Vertex Best. So um, here we have a helmet. Inside the actual rucksack itself. So. I've got the visor, which is a clip-on, art flash protective visor that attaches to the front of the Petzl helmet. Furthermore, depending on the level of risk of what I'm working on, which the uh, turbine manufacturers themselves should have had indi indicative instant energy values of what the potential art flash risk could be, um, to the art flash calculation at different locations around the turbine, and so in many turbines, there is a risk where you're maybe moving up to category 3, which is a minimum of 25 calories per centimetre square. So in this instance, from a top half, a torso perspective, of course you could put on a one-piece overall, which actually will give you a certified, from a strata protection perspective, a certified layered combination for a category 3 all over. However, some wind turbine organisations prefer the option of having just a jacket, so here you have a jacket which is matching to the trousers themselves. Again, super lightweight, and very often the turbine technicians would already be wearing this as a standard item, but in the event of it being warmer weather, hot conditions, which is always a challenge, when you have cold conditions it's very easy to continually layer up. The wind turbine technician, as well as being protected, is also keeping himself warm. The challenge is keeping yourself, keeping yourself safe, electrical safety risk, when the weather is warmer. So here, I'm cool, I'm good to go, whether I was wearing art flash protective clothing or just regular polyester cotton clothing. But I can also put on this additional jacket, again, super lightweight. And with the addition of this jacket, I'm now moving up through layered certifications from uh, an 8.8 .8 calorie t-shirt now with a 10.5 calorie jacket to a 25.6 cal per centimeter square, which is a category three on the Archer Belief 1584, um, art flash protection. So I hope you can see here how simply I'm taking myself across the risk categories in a simple, comfortable way. In here as well, I have my lockout tag out kit, which depending on how long my activity is going to take, I can actually get the item Attach this around my waist, 
to enable me to have my relevant locks and keys to hand to be able to perform suitable isolations. In here as well, is my testing equipment. I would say of varying sorts. Now in here, I have my insulated rubber gloves and also the overprotectors. Now here we have a choice. So the decision could be that to alleviate the engineers from using regular insulated rubber gloves with the overprotectors, which are required from an NFPA 70E perspective, but also if there is no mechanical protection offered within the insulated gloves, then you need to be combining these items together. So what are the benefits and what are the disadvantages? So here, this is the regular insulated glove. The real critical thing here is to ensure that you are sizing your cells up with the correct insulated glove. So typically we find that engineers are issued with a generic glove or an organisation just orders a standard size 9, size 10 or size 11. People like myself who have got relatively smallish, relatively uh, slim hands as it were, this here is a size 9 and it's okay. I have good dexterity, very, very flexible glove. And this particular one here is a class 0, which is a commonly used 7,500 volt glove. Um, however, I would prefer actually a size 8, just to ensure that nice snug fit, maximum dexterity to enable me to undertake the work that I need. And then even when combined with a leather overprotector, which again is made from a very, very thin goat skin leather. I still have very, very good dexterity, and as many organisations, what they would find is they would leave the glove pretty much permanently inside the overprotector. Psychologically, the engineer then is only donning, in essence, one pair of gloves. Of course, prior to work, it's recommended that a glove, either at intervals or before every time, depending on your own risk assessments, a glove is tested. And here, what you're looking for is any evidence of any leakage around the actual glove. This particular glove here is again a Class Zero glove. This is a composite glove. What this means is that rather than it just being a latex glove, it is combined mechanical protection on the glove as well. This means that the glove can be used, could be used, without the leather overprotector. So again, the engineer is only donning one pair of gloves. Again, it's important to get the glove that is the right size for the engineer. However, you do lose some of the dexterity. The glove is typically a thicker, a thicker composition, which means that you don't quite get the same dexterity, but the engineer is only donning, again, one pair of gloves. So before starting works, engineers would also be expected to put the balaclava on, so they would don a balaclava, their helmet, their visor, and they're good to work. So the engineer is now protected in a very, very simple, short space of time, all contained within one back package. And now I'm going to put my items back and we can see how short a time I can keep myself protected. So with that, I'm safe and I'm good to go. And most importantly, I'm going home safe. Thank you for watching.